Continuing the first ideal villains for particular heroes videos, I decided to move forward with The Flash today. After Batman and Superman, The Flash rogues gallery might be the most memorable. You could argue it maybe with someone like Green Lantern, but regardless, he's likely a top three. The Flash has many options on who would be his first ideal villain, but I think one of the biggest problems with the character is over the years, they've really just shrunk down his threats to speedsters. And as fun as that can be for the particular time, it does need to be changed up. Eventually, when you continue to match your hero against a villain with the same power set, just the anti-beliefs of the hero, it stops becoming a challenge and it just becomes a story of, in his case, who's faster. And obviously, with comic books, most plots require the hero to win, in which Barry or Wally, whoever your Flash is, always ends up being the quicker one. So that's why I think Flash's first ideal villain should be Captain Cold. Now, I know Captain Cold is no joke, and over the years, he's been vastly upgraded to the point where he doesn't even need to use a gun anymore because he literally has ice in his veins. And as if cryokinesis wasn't enough, he has complete control and manipulation on the coldest point possible. However, he would not begin with those powers. His beginning point is Leonard Snart being a genius level intellect, but becoming a thief and also utilizing the cold gun. I would keep his origin relatively similar where he's been raised by an abusive alcoholic father since his mother died with his sister. As time went on, they just simply did not have the right parental guidance and that led Leonard and his sister to go down the wrong path. No matter how smart Leonard may be, no one was there to teach him properly the right path to go down and what his true potential could have been. Growing up through a very poor life, not just in wealth, but in surroundings, he would take it upon himself to take care of his sister through the elements of crime. Essentially, his sister being a very talented dancer does run into a situation where she discovers she has a brain tumor. What he would do is he would use his intellect to create a very advanced cold gun to possibly rob banks or anywhere of high-end wealth that he could obtain that money and resources to either cure his sister or bring her to a top-end hospital around the world to remove the tumor. This would, of course, result in The Flash stopping Captain Cold whenever he tries to hold up a bank, keep people hostage, breaking into vaults that belong to wealthy businesses and companies. And I think at this point in time, The Flash would already have dealt with a lot of bank robber type of characters, even if they're not necessarily part of a rogues gallery. Just in the beginning of his career, that is a lot of what he has been held to. When dealing with Captain Cold, yes, of course, he is a little bit different with this ice gun that he's never seen before, capable of producing power that he's never seen before. But at the end of the day, the Flash might simply see him as just another petty bank robber. But he does not realize, even though he's not going about it properly, that Leonard Snart is actually doing this for a good reason, and it is to save his dying sister. Perhaps you could could play off of this idea that because the Flash is constantly moving so fast, he's not really taking the time to slow down and to analyze people's problems and issues and why they personally do what they have to do. Because maybe at that point he would have a little more understanding for Leonard's situation and could possibly even find a way to help him. One big score, that's all Leonard needed to save his sister, and in very dire times because she does not have long at all. When the Flash thwarts Captain Cold, she ends up falling into a coma, being placed into the hospital, too late to perform any procedure on her, which would only leave a couple of weeks, perhaps even days, until she finally passes away. With this comes his complete hatred for the Flash. And the reason why I did this is because I felt like we needed a much more personal reason on why Captain Cold will always hate 
the Flash. When you look at Captain Cold and the Flash's relationship throughout history, he is probably the one villain that he constantly has run-ins in, potentially even more so than someone like Professor Zoom. And I know at the end of the day, there are a lot of Flash villains that you could say are a higher threat than Captain Cold. Someone like Mirror Master, or Professor Zoom, Gorilla Grodd, or any other speedster he might have. However, my reasoning for a story similar to this, if not completely this, is because it builds not only his hatred for the Flash, but it builds their long-lasting tension with one another through out the next years to come. It also brings Captain Cold to situations where when Flash's rogues gallery grows throughout the years, he can successfully create the rogues that will constantly go up against the Flash, which are very similar to Spider-Man's Sinister Six, and that is how they would treat their relationship with the Flash, except every single one of them does actually want to kill him. Flash would eventually find out why Leonard is doing what he's doing, why he's created this cold gun, why he has maybe all of these other ice type of gadgets he uses. He would also feel a lot of sympathy and pity for him, considering that he was only trying to do what he was doing for his dying sister, and now thwarting his original plan, he has now potentially left his sister literally for dead. But unfortunately, Unfortunately for The Flash, no matter how much apologies he may have for Leonard, no matter how much he wants to make it up to him, it's already too late. Captain Cold now has an eternal hatred for him. This is where he would make it his goal that until his last breath, his plan is to kill The Flash once and for all. Of course, someone like The Flash who can run at the speed of light, if not infinitely faster, as we have seen over history. He is too overpowered, in my opinion. Going up against someone with ice capabilities as his first villain would be interesting, because as we know, ice slows down. It would be interesting to see how the Flash would deal with something where, as he's running at the speed of light, Captain Cold gets a lucky shot on his leg and freezes him in place, or even injures himself. Having a massive solidified casing of ice hit your body at the speed he's going, that's not going to feel nice. And another problem we do have with the Flash is that he can move so fast other than his speedster villains. How are some of his villains even a threat to him anymore? And I think there's two factors that we do need to take into consideration with the character. Number one, this is the beginning of his career and he's never really fought anybody like this before. Nobody who has had some sort of supernatural or technological power at least. He's new to this. He's young. He's a little naive. He's just getting started. You're bound to make mistakes. Everyone will. Number two, the Flash can only move as fast as the plot allows him. Unfortunately, with the character, since writers have made some of these characters so stupidly overpowered, we do need to place a plot in which the Flash cannot move so ridiculously fast, at least not all of the time. He definitely needs to have a speed barrier and I think a speed barrier is definitely good in this situation since, like I said, he's younger. With this rivalry that they create within this first story, this would be able to translate not just into the rogues who will constantly go after the Flash, but this might even get Captain Cold involved with trying to figure out who he really is and who his family and friends are so he can make it personal the way even though he's intelligent, his misguided sense of judgment is making what the Flash did to him in his first robbery feel personal even though it wasn't. And perhaps this is a very interesting play on the character of Captain Cold, where he keeps putting all his problems on someone like the Flash, whereas maybe he should have used his genius level intellect to find a different, more ethical and legal way to save his sister, instead of resorting to crime and a weapon that can cause destruction. However, having an abusive, alcoholic father is not going to help your future judgment though. And since this story is 
is only going to feature the Captain Cold without his natural abilities of cryokinesis. It's all going to be technology-based. To also make it feel like the wider world is really starting to appear, and the Flash's future with the Justice League and other heroes and villains are actually opening up. What you could do, no matter how you chose to write the story, I'll just give a simplistic one right now. Lex Luthor could approach Leonard in prison and offer him the opportunity to turn his technological abilities into biological ones, in which he tells Leonard as well that I also have possession of your sister. She's not dead. She did not die from the brain tumor. I actually removed the brain tumor and discovered that by removing it, it was actually holding an untapped potential of a biological power she held. I feel that since you are the other sibling, you have somewhere in your biological DNA that would be able to house a metahuman power. And from that point on, this is where Captain Cold would become a far more deadlier character to the Flash and far more unpredictable in how he operates. So there it is, guys. Captain Cold for my first ideal Flash villain. Now, just like I said for the Batman and Superman versions of these videos, there are so many villains you could choose. There are a lot of villains that are not necessarily the wrong answer for this. So in the comments below, you guys let me know who your ideal first villain for the Flash would be. Also, I take requests. I'm going to be doing another one of these for Wonder Woman and Green Lantern, but comment another character you'd like to see me make this type of video for. But that is all I have for you on this one, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed it, and until the next time, I will talk to you all very soon.